Hello, myself, uh, Vaman Kubair, uh, uh, from Soul to Sys, uh, Solar Systems Solutions. Uh, we are a consulting organization. We consult in design, quality, and performance aspects of the solar PV power plants, be it off-grid or on-grid uh, or whatever. Uh, uh, I have uh, uh, consulted uh, uh, National Center for PV Research and Education at IIT Bombay for during their first phase uh, for five years developing training programs and also uh, uh, being instrumental in uh, developing the one megawatt uh, solar PV power plant at IIT Bombay. Uh, recently, uh, 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 we have com completed quality and uh, performance type assignment on a one megawatt rooftop solar power plant and done uh, uh, four uh, in installation inspections, quality as well as performance inspections and with the aim to improve the performance of the power plants. Uh, I will tell you more about quality and performance uh, during my uh, presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Abhay Tilwankar. Uh, I represent Mahindra Sastan Private Limited. Uh, we are one of the leading EPC players uh, in the solar industry today. I head the performance analytics division within Sastan, uh, which is a part of the ONM business unit. Thanks, Abhay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amit Barve. Uh, I'm a head of business development uh, at Park Energy and responsible for the sales and business development Pan India. And we are an investor as a developer as well as an EPC company in the solar industry for last nine years. We'll speak more about during my presentation. Would like to uh, ask now Brinder to give a brief introduction. Thank you, Amiji. Good afternoon to all. My name is Brinder Gandhi. I am uh, from Impulse Green Energy. We are uh, trading inverters, cable connectors, and balance of system components, and also uh, solutions for DG synchronization and communication for uh, solar projects. Uh, I don't have any presentation, but I will talk about my experience uh, over the last 10 years in the solar market. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Myself, Dhananjan Nandedkar, I'm representing Climax Solar. I am heading the asset management division in Climax for West and North. Before this, I was with Chemtrol Solar, worked in different divisions, mostly projects, engineering, and currently asset management. So if any questions related to these three sections, I can take it up. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Colonel Raghuram. I'm from Ujas Energy Limited, Indore. I am uh, looking after the entire project management and operations of uh, our uh, rooftop business. So today I would, uh, you know, I uh, hope to take this opportunity to share uh, some of our concerns and what we expect from uh, some of the manufacturers here. Thanks. Uh, thanks, gentlemen, for a brief introduction to the audience. Uh, maybe we can start with the presentation from uh, Vaman to start. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot being talked about quality. Uh, however, we are trying to do something about it uh, in our uh, small way. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, mainly what are the quality uh, considerations during design. And uh, of course, most importantly, the safety and the protection of the power plant. Uh, quality leads to the performance of the plant. Uh, and monitoring of performance is also very vital uh, in order to optimize the performance. So here uh, is a simple equation uh, in any solar power plant. Everyone talks about generation and generation comes uh, as a result of two things. Uh, to put it simply, one is the insulation or the solar radiation that you receive. And second, uh, the uh, the most important uh, pa pa parameter in the uh, equation is the performance of the power plant, uh, which needs to be optimized in order to get the generation. Uh, so what are the governing factors uh, behind the generation? Uh, performance ratio, uh, the insulation or the radiation, and uh, uh, also the availability of the plant, uh, which is a f uh, uh, function of the uh, uh, o and operation and maintenance of the plant. Uh, 
the performance ratio essentially uh, depends on the various system loss factors, which we'll be talking about briefly, and the degradation of the module. Uh, many of you might know uh, what is the CUF, capacity utilization factor, which is the ratio of the generation uh, and the potential energy, assuming that the plant runs 24 by seven. Uh, whereas the performance ratio is simply the ratio of the generation and the rated energy. Uh, both generation and rated energy uh, are proportional to the radiation and therefore the performance ratio is largely independent of the radiation. It's a true index of the uh, efficiency of the plant. So it's a typical system loss diagram where various losses come into play from DC side to AC side. Uh, typically, uh, the performance ratio is of the order of 75 to 80%. For a good plant, it is 80 or more. And uh, various factors, some of them, as I've shown, uh, are design related, uh, such as the uh, module mismatch or the temperature. Then uh, if you look at the soiling, it's related to the operation of the plant and cabling, et cetera, is related to the installation. So it's not only about design, it's also about how you install the plant, how you operate, maintain the plant in order to maintain the uh, performance uh, ratio of the plant. So uh, quality, uh, why do we need quality? Because uh, uh, quality is essentially the key for long-term performance of the plant. And uh, uh, that's the only way you can reduce your LCOE uh, or the levelized cost. Uh, also, mo more importantly, quality governs the safety aspects, the reliability and the durability of the plant. And uh, the way to start is the standards compliance. Today, BIS is coming out with various standards based on IC, and uh, it's a good start to uh, uh, comply with those standards on uh, a system level, not only components, but also system. Uh, so quality essentially uh, is not uh, uh, about simply maintaining the quality of components, but it is the entire value chain starting from right from feasibility through to the operation and maintenance of the plant. So what are the various factors governing the quality, uh, feasibility and design inputs, component selection, uh, PV inverter design, uh, installation practices, monitoring, and the whole gamut. Uh, most important is quality checks during each and every phase and uh, feedback into the whole process in order to improve the uh, performance. Uh, various design aspects, I will not go into the detail, I think uh, due to uh, want of time, because I want to show you some monitoring examples. Uh, but yeah, right from PV module to monitoring, there's number of design aspects where quality needs to be built into right from day one, because in a PV plant, you get only one chance to get things right. After you have installed the plant, uh, there's no comeback. Then electrical design, uh, if you look at, there's a number of uh, uh, points which you have to go over and make sure that the quality is right. Uh, <clears throat> for example, cable sizing. The cable uh, size depends not only on the, uh, sorry, the cable selection not only depends on the current carrying capacity, but also the, uh, the length of the cable, and therefore you have to optimize on that. Uh, so with all that, uh, once you have a quality plan, uh, it is essential to monitor the, uh, it is essential to monitor the performance of the plan. Uh, three things are basic, uh, generation, radiation, and the temperature, uh, the module back surface temperature. Uh, you need to evaluate the performance, not on a minute to minute or a day, uh, hour to hour basis, but on a daily, weekly, and monthly, as well as yearly basis and compare with your uh, initial estimates and make the necessary uh, uh, corrections to get the right performance. So this is an example. Uh, this is the basic thing, uh, thing that you should start with, uh, where, uh, where you have the generation month to month, the insulation that you get month to month, and also the, uh, with that you can calculate what is the performance ratio of your plant from month to month. This will vary uh, depending on the radiation and the temperature. Uh, to evaluate the performance, you need to look at DC performance prior, uh, uh, ahead of the inverter, the inverter performance, and then the AC performance uh, on the other side. The inverter performance, uh, 
uh, we need to look at both DC as well as AC uh, energy generation, uh, the power as well as the energy efficiency of the inverter. And uh, in string inverters, uh, you need to look at the performance ratio of each and every uh, inverter because they may be working uh, 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 differently. Then you need to look at on the DC side, uh, input voltage, current as well as power, and then get into uh, each and every string current because there could be shading, soiling, uh, as well as the connectivity issues uh, related to the uh, strings. Uh, DC and AC performance, uh, there's four things I've listed here, which are the variable losses. Thermal loss, soiling, DC cable, and AC cable. Now, there is a way to actually uh, 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 input uh, the necessary parameters into the SCADA system and evaluate these losses individually. Uh, uh, on a on a daily or monthly basis. So here is an example of shadow analysis, wherein what we do is we have uh, the generation and uh, uh, the uh, loss due to shadow uh, has been estimated, and therefore uh, the deem generation if there was no shadow, and therefore uh, 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 something can be done about shadows, either trimming trees or moving the panels from one place to the other, and so on. Uh, then specific generation, which is kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak. If you have a baseline specific generation in mind, then uh, you can uh, get more uh, uh, meaningful uh, output from this. And then uh, you can look at the what is the expected radiation based on the, uh, sorry the generation based on the radiation, and uh, also uh, start to look at some of the uh, effects uh, uh, such as uh, the soiling of the modules. This is uh, the inverter performance, uh, individual inverter performance, where you see what is the generation of each inverter and what is the performance ratio of each inverter. Then uh, you can even dig deeper. Uh, this is, we are looking at a daily uh, generation loss. And uh, you'll find that uh, I think during 9 and 10 AM, one of the inverters is actually uh, losing some uh, power energy, losing some output. And that could be due to shading or any other effect. So these are the things that uh, need to be monitored. Uh, the, uh, the point that I want to make here is there is lots of data available, but that needs to be analyzed in a meaningful way and corrections made uh, to the plant uh, so that the plant operates day in and day out with uh, good performance. Uh, so here are various performance optimization techniques. Uh, for example, uh, reduce mismatch of modules, then uh, uh, you have optimization of the cables, uh, interconnections, and so on. Uh, now, these are some of the system level standards. Uh, the first one is for the um, uh, safety uh, and design aspects. The second one is for the uh, uh, commissioning uh, and inspection. And the third one is for the, uh, mainly for the measurement uh, side of things. Then there is also standard uh, to do with the utility um, uh, interface of the uh, systems. Um, so here is one example how these standards can be used to uh, design the systems. 62548 uh, can be used to design this, all the safety aspects of the uh, system, uh, all the protection devices, cable sizing, earthing, uh, and so on. There are uh, some new standards in place for system earthing, as well as the lighting arrester, which need, need to be uh, uh, adhered to and also surge protection devices, AC standard is already in place and DC uh, will be coming in force. Uh, so uh, essentially, uh, we focus on the design and engineering of the plant, the, um, the component selection, testing and monitoring, and also the performance optimization. So these are the areas um, we feel that they add value to the system uh, uh, the, uh, deliver a quality system and therefore uh, day in and day out performance and uh, good returns over the lifetime of the power plant. So essentially you start off with quality and end up with uh, good returns uh, during the lifetime of the plant. Yeah, I'm already, almost done. So we have three uh, quality packs that we offer uh, for depending on the size and type of the system. And uh, they have various deliverables 
in compliance, uh, quality, uh, as well as the uh, uh, performance. And so uh, we can also do mix and match of these depending on the client requirement. Yeah, so that's uh, basically uh, uh, maximizing generation, optimizing performance uh, by quality design integration, monitoring and feedback. And therefore sustainability uh, of the plant can be achieved uh, through the quality value chain. Thank you. Thanks, Vaman, uh, for giving the insights onto the optimization of solar power plant. Uh, I, I would request Abhay uh, to do a brief presentation on his topic of ONM and uh, performance analytics. Great, okay. So uh, I'm Abhay again, and I promise you I won't take more than five minutes. Um, just so that we can tune our discussion a little, how many of you in the room are from the solar industry supplying components or, uh, you know, part of the BOP? Okay, how many EPC integrators? Okay, and how many developers or asset owners? One, okay. Great. So then um, I'm from the ONM and analytics side of uh, Mahindra Sasten. Just to give you a quick insight, we are a part of the flagship Mahindra group. Um, we have five main divisions. Uh, ONM and analytics is one of them, which is what I would like to show something about. Uh, typically, like Mr. Vaman just mentioned, building a good plant and designing it well is only half the job done. It's really important for you to ensure that the operations and maintenance of the plant is up to the mark to ensure two things. One, which is maximize your return or generation. The second one, maximize uptime. So these are the two key levers. Um, coming to the portfolio that we have, today we are operating about 1.5 gigawatt of assets across India, the smallest one being five kilowatt and the largest one being 120 megawatt across 104 locations. But I think what I would like to talk about is one, the best practices that can be used, uh, examples being cluster-based uh, spares so that you can optimize the number of spares you're keeping, doing trend analysis, soiling analysis, doing a plant health checkup, ensuring there is condition-based maintenance and using real-time monitoring and data analytics to your advantage. Uh, we are proud of having an uptime consistently of uh, upwards of 99.7% for the last five years. To give you a glimpse of the other best practices that are available to the solar industry today is doing remote monitoring and central dashboarding. You also can invest in field testing, understanding what are the things that go wrong, a few of which Mr. Waman highlighted initially, and there are many more that you can do. And just to mention, we are uh, a company which has the only mobile PV lab which allows you to flash test your modules on the site. So that's an investment Mahindra has made only to improve the quality of the assets that we have in the industry today. Um, typically operations and maintenance can be divided in uh, this fashion and uh, it's, it's a long term association. It's, it's not like EPC where you construct it in, let's say five months and then you're gone. Um, processes, standards, SOPs, checklist will always ensure your plants have uptime, but then that's not it. You need to train your manpower and ensure that your staff knows what to do when a situation arises. There are things that you can do when you're comparing two plants, when you're comparing within the plant, to push it to the global maxima, which can give you that extra rupee out of your plant. These are a few screenshots of certain predictive conditional maintenance that you can do at your plants. Um, coming to the key challenges faced in the industry today, I think uh, the three big challenges that are there is one grid and the grid fluctuation that we could see going forward as RE keeps increasing as a percentage share. Uh, margin pressures, not just on ONM, but even the subcontractors, the EPC players, uh, the balance of system suppliers, 
So across the industries, there's a lot of margin pressure which could lead to cutting corners and quality issues, which at the end of the day will not allow you to deliver the kind of ROI that you had probably imagined when you built the plant. And the third one, which more or less we've been seeing ever since the solar industry started, but it's about local issues where locals can then make or break your investment decision at the location that you've put in. Just an approximate breakup of the O&M cost. The largest component of O&M is manpower. So whether it's for security, whether it's for technicians or the engineers who maintain the plant, or even the laborers who come down and clean your plant. So approximately 60 to 70% of your O&M cost would be your manpower cost. The others is maintenance, tools, tackles, analytics, etc. cetera. Um, this is a quick shot of how complicated even a small 20 megawatt plant could be. I've retained this slide from three, four years ago. And at that time, this used to be like a major plant. 20 megawatts used to be like, wow, Waman mentioned during his introduction, IIT Bombay at that time, uh, Amit sir was a part of that team which did it. And I know at that time that one megawatt was a big plant. Need for remote monitoring, I think uh, four simple points for the reporting, for understanding downtime, to identify underperformance, and for asset management that Dhananjay sir does. Uh, coming to the new age monitoring tools, there are a lot of uh, alternatives that are available today. A few screenshots just to highlight two or three things. One, your dashboard allows you to see hundreds of plants in one go. Second, it can understand and do much more than what humans can do sitting and looking at a screen. And three, it allows you to do more than just monitoring and reporting. It allows you to take decisions today. Um, this is something that is central to us. Uh, we have continuously kept a focus on analytics and that's my designation as well, that it's my duty to keep focusing on analytics and seeing how data can help take better decisions. This is a slide on how network operation centers came about and how they're evolving as we speak. This is a quick shot of uh, the command center that we have in Andheri, um, which is manned by six people and monitors about 800 megawatt. And that's it. I hope I've kept my time. Thank you. Thanks, Abhay. Thanks for a wonderful presentation and crisp way to uh, really stick to the time.